At 9.30 this morning, 30-something people are going to walk in this room and they're going to get very deeply into one of the great orchestral pieces of all times, Ravel's ballet score for Daphnis and Chloe. What we're really doing is a, a forensic analysis. We're trying to understand not so much how Ravel does what he does, but why he does what he does. And we, we dig very, very deep into the music um, and get really underneath in a way that, that, that when you just listen, you don't. Then we will have uh, actually a panel of guests today talking about music in the brain, which is a subject um, very important for anyone dealing with music and pictures. Some of the people who come here are really at the tops of their game, at the tops of their profession, uh, highly respected uh, in, in the uh, television industry, in the, music, in the music world, and yet they're all coming into this room in a common purpose which almost has nothing to do with that level of achievement. They're, they're coming to do something they love just for the love of it, just for the sake of doing it, and just for the sake of hanging out with like-minded people. You know, they've got a wealth of knowledge and experience, so to be around those people and have conversations with them is amazing, first of all. And then you're studying something that is so rich, like the Ravel itself is so incredible, and to go through it in such a, you know, sort of bar by bar kind of fashion, every month I come out of that, I'm just like, wow, I, I can't wait to go back to my studio and write something. So 92 to 104, just, just for fun. Unique things start to, to settle into your subconscious and you start experiencing bits of it and it starts really to sink in. And it sort of gives you a little chill up the spine or, or it makes you sort of go, holy, Matt, yeah, I know what that is. I know how to use that. I can, I can find that, that, that sort of elusive emotion that, that, that's coming uh, off the page and off the music. For those people who are coming really for the study, what they're going to get here is a, is a high-level master class. Uh, they will walk away with uh, techniques uh, of writing that could benefit them in their own work should they choose to use those techniques. And it doesn't really matter whether you're classically trained or not. These are overriding principles of great composition, great orchestration that hold regardless of the medium or the, or the genre of music. If you're working in those areas, if you're a songwriter or a producer working in pop music, you might go, what's Ravel to me? You might not use these things directly in your music, but to expand that horizon that you have um, and to open yourself up to new ideas, you're just going to come away from this so inspired and, and with, with a way to filter those things through the things that you're doing and just really broaden what your work is. If you're a filmmaker, for example, a director or an editor will walk away with a, a real sense of the depth of expression and emotion that is only possible in music played by human beings on instruments. And I think most people that work in screen composition consider themselves filmmakers or storytellers. And as a storyteller in a very complex medium like film where there's so many different production aspects that you have to be very aware of, my sense is that music is always the most mysterious and the most difficult to talk about. But just sitting down and hearing how, how a composer like Ravel or Stravinsky or someone uh, addresses in their way, scoring motion or words, because I mean, we're looking at Daphnis and Chloe right now, which is a, you know, it's, it, a, it's actually scoring a, a piece of stage. And same thing with the Rite of Spring, it's actually scoring a piece of stage action and dance. And, and so to see, to be exposed to how great composers have done that, you know, and how music was used and, and moved a storyline along, it's really good for you, I think. Most filmmakers I meet are in love with music in some way. And to be able to come in, even if you're just looking at it in a very general sense, and you see the lines, and you see shapes and forms, and sort of have a, a slightly different understanding of how that's created, I think it's just going to be enriching and really exciting to see from the other side, uh, just as with screen composers, when we go and see how a film is put together from different aspects. How many uh, sessions are we in now? Maybe five or six sessions. And each time it's been very different, the, the type of person that's been our guest and, and the, the experience that they bring to the table, you know, whether it's a director or another composer, it makes you uh, realize that, you know, in your isolated world, that there's other stuff going on and uh, it's a matter of opening up things to people. Especially with, with Bartel's talk, 
that we're on the verge of understanding sound and music in a completely different way than we ever have, uh, in a way that will inform us what is actually happening to us physically and, and, and in our minds. You know, that's a very exciting thing to be a part of. So we can drive pretty much any frequency and music drives pretty much any frequency. Let me throw in what I think is the most important quote for us of the lifetime. Rodolfo Linas, one of the fathers of modern neuroscience, I brought him here a year ago for a series of lectures, says that music is the machine language of the brain. Music is the machine language of the brain, not metaphorically, literally. The brain works like music. If you start looking at the brain in terms of its oscillatory, vibratory activity. You know, when I was doing Star Trek The Next Generation, each episode was like a 42 minute, you know, like a small feature, like five reels. And each time the starship would be in a different part of the galaxy, they would encounter a different culture. So every time we went to a different place, I had, uh, I had a book called The Scale Chord Synopticon that was written by uh, five graduate students from Cal State Northridge. And in that chord scale synopticon, it had every scale that they collected from around the earth and all broken down by whole step, half steps, by how many intervals are in, in their scale and by region. So uh, I went through it and I did my study to say, well, this is a Klingon scale because this evokes what I felt was uh, a Klingon, what Klingons would have created for their music uh, vibe, for their, and, and then an instrumentation too. I've been spending a lot of time in one room by myself. Um, actually, in this particular room, I've been in here for 10 years. Um, the door closed. Once in a while, somebody will come in and do something in the booth in there, but not that often. Usually, I'm creating stuff here on my own. Um, it's, I love doing it, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, a thing that after a while, you, you, sort of, um, you sort of miss the company of others, and you realize when you're around other people that that there's a lot to be gained by interaction. You will study together, uh, you'll laugh together, you'll break bread together, and we'll have experienced what is it that made you get into music in the first place. And it was that group experience that really is at the heart of it. And Ravel provides everybody that comes with an opportunity for two hours a month of doing it a completely different way. It's the kind of club where everybody's good and everybody's welcome.